you're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as Ken Thurston, the man called X. Three months ago, in a wind-battered tent clinging precariously to the snow-clad slopes of Mount Lambaparbat in Bhutan, a letter was written. Tonight in a hotel room in Chongqing, China, a telephone rings. The connection between them? Well, listen. Hello. New York, United States is calling. Mr. Ken Thurston, please. Good. Put him on. Yes, sir. Go ahead, please. Hello, Ken? Well, hello, Chief. Ken, what's the idea of changing your plans? I thought you were coming straight home from Chongqing. I was, Chief, until you changed my mind for me. I changed your mind? Sure, by forwarding Bill Conrad's letter to me. Conrad? Oh, that doctor friend of yours who's on some uh, mountain climbing expedition. Eh? That's right. They're tackling Mount Lamba Pabat over in Bhutan. I'm going to pay him a visit. Now, look, Ken, if you need a vacation... Ever I... heard of uh, Psittacosis, Chief? Psittacosis? What in blazes? that? Well, parrot fever, you know. Oh, sure, sure. A nearly 100% fatal tropical disease. Bill writes he's come across some on Lamba Pabat. So what? What's parrot fever in the northern province of India got to do with us? Plenty, I think. Remember a few years back when we thought the enemy was experimenting in biological warfare? Oh, sure. The idea of enemy bombers plastering our cities with deadly germs had us plenty worried. Yeah. And we were looking for a certain specialist in tropical diseases. Specialist in... Professor Reader. Right. But I thought you'd trace the professor to Karachi and aboard a private plane for Chungking. I had. But the plane never got there. So, where's Reader? And Bhutan happens to lie almost midway between the two cities. Mm -hmm. A missing scientist who specializes in tropical diseases. Psittacosis on Lamba Parvat. Yep. No, Ken. Sounds like pretty slim evidence for you to chase to Bhutan. Because parrot fever can be found anywhere you can find parrots. You're so right. But there's one thing I forgot to tell you. There are no parrots on Lamba Pabat. Mr. Thurston, do you have to keep flying in and out of those mountains all the time? I get dizzy from high places. Nipsimanic, you understand? You should have thought of that before stowing away on this plane, Pagan. Well, you wouldn't take me with you, so how else could I supply you with my invaluable assistance? And how was it to know you were going someplace like this? Look at that. Look at that thing over there. It must be ten miles high. Nothing but snow and stuff on it. That's uh, Mount Labatabat. Hang on. Mount Labat? Mr. Rex, we're falling. Relax, you idiot. We're going to land. On that pile of rocks? We'll be crushed to death. Not on that landing strip, we won't. Oh, you mean ahead there, beside the prison or something? That's the castle of Salal Chowda, backer of the climbing expedition Bill Conrad's on. But why are we going to see him? To find out what he and Bill can tell us about Professor Reader and about psittacosis. Huh? Hold your hat, we're going in. Go in and pay our respects. It's cold out here. Nothing but icicles should live in such a place. Hey, what was that? Thunder. You always hear it around these mountain peaks. Wind, snow, thunder. You know too much. Oh, what a joint. At least you'd think the people would be hospital enough to meet us. I don't know about people, Pagan, but there's a young lady coming this way. A young... Hey, you're right. Some cute cookie. You are fools. You are blind, stupid, idiotic fools. Huh? Wow. Well. Go back. Return where you came from before you too fall victim to the spirit of the snows. 
that a standard pitch you give to all arriving guests? Wise men do not make light of serious warnings, Saeed. Your friend, Dr. Conrad, is proof of that. Bill, what about him? He would not listen either, Saeed. And now Dr. Conrad is dead. tell you, Thurston Saeed, how deeply we regret your making such a long journey only to find your friend gone forever. Bill Conrad will be missed by more than me, Sir Lyle. Right, Thurston. A good doctor can be missed by all humanity. I felt fortunate indeed when he volunteered for my expedition. Your expedition, Huxford? John Huxford is the real leader, Thurston Saeed. I merely supplied the financial backing. I see. You said, uh, Bill slipped and fell in a crevasse? So it would appear. Though none of us saw it happen, we merely missed him from his tent one night. The next morning, my ward, Marlies, discovered his body. Is that not so, my dear? Yes. Yes, that is right, Sir Love. Just another link in the chain of ill fortune that's followed this expedition. You've been having tough luck, Huxford? Well, we've lost some valuable scientific instruments. Conrad's death was a major blow, of course, but I'm referring specifically to a strange, virulent malady that's been attacking our native bearers and helpers. Oh, what's that? It's a mysterious fever. Practically always fatal. I think we've tried work, son, and we've lost so many men, the others refuse to accompany us any longer. They claim that Lumber Parbat is being guarded from desecration by foreigners, being guarded by the spirit of the snows. Uh. Yes, yes, yes. However, we're, we've convinced half a dozen or so that their superstitions are foolish. They're at the base camp now, preparing for another drive upon the summit. They... they will never reach it. Never. Marlies. The superstitions are not foolish. The spirit of the snows is enraged. Marlies. Ask the Lama if you will not believe me. Ask the Lama. He will tell you. Lama? Yes. Lama Sholto of the Temple of Buddha near the camp. He keeps filling the heads of my natives with this nonsense, trying to keep them away from the mountain. And now Marlies, badly upset by your friend's death, is beginning to believe it. There doesn't seem to be much nonsense about parrot fever, Sir Lyle. Parrot fever? What gave you the idea that it's psittacosis? That's what I understand that someone went into it up here. A professor, Reader. Reader? No, no. And who is he, Thiston Saeed? I only know Reader by reputation, Sir Lyle. But I've heard the professor is quite an authority on tropical diseases... In this case, your informant was quite wrong. The disease is definitely not parrot fever. Pretty sure of it, aren't you? Thurston, I once studied medicine at the Sorbonne in Paris. And though I live in the snows of Lumber Parbat, I too am quite an authority on tropical diseases. <laughs> out here riding this overgrown goats anyway. Hagon, we're going to visit the base camp for the climbers. But it was so comfortable back in the castle. Besides, what's all this business about fevers, spirits, parrots? I'm not sure yet. But I got a hunch that something's brewing up here. Something that might affect the whole world. You mean this spirit in the snow? Uh, more like the spirit of war. Huh? Oh, look. Tents. Yeah, it's the base camp. But, Mr. X, there's nobody there. Probably in that tent over there, getting out of the wind. Hello? Anyone around? Nobody's home. Must have gone to a movie or something. <laughs> Come on, let's take a look. Hello in there. Hello? See? Just like I said, nobody home. Double feature, maybe. Let's go in the tent to make sure. You see? Only some piles of old blankets. They... <gasps> Those blankets. They got faces. Yeah. Those were natives, Pega. Mr. X. Look at them. Emaciated skin, all... Uh, raspberry marks on their faces and hands. But what happened? What does it mean? It means that Salal was wrong. The base camp's been wiped out in sub-zero weather by a tropical disease. Psittacosis. Mr. X, that noise. Yeah, I was wrong, too. 
There are parrots on Lumber Parba. <laughs> And now to continue with Frigidaire's Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. In response to a mysterious letter from his friend, Dr. Bill Conrad, Ken Thurston has gone to far off Bhutan. There he learns Conrad is dead and finds a seeming paradox in nature. For the virulent tropic disease, psittacosis, ferret fever, has wiped out the camp of a mountain climbing expedition on the wintry slopes of Mount Lamba Parbat. Now Ken and Pagon stand in the desolate camp, watching a screeching parrot waddle away through the snows. Mr. Rex, you mean that parrot bird killed all those men dead? Pagon, somebody helped it spread a deadly virus among them. But who would do a thing like that? And why? Maybe a certain Professor Reader can answer that. Huh? Reader's here, all right. Must be. Somewhere on Lumber Pabat. Still trying to turn the world into a wholesale slaughterhouse. There is no hope huh? for the unbelievers of this world, O evil one. Mr. X, look. Yeah, we've got company. Uh, but he's got his gang with him. They're pointing those rifles at us. Who is he, anyways? Pagan, I think you're looking at the Lama Sholto. Yes, unbeliever, I am Lama Sholto, guardian of the temple. Too bad you didn't spend your time guarding the men of this camp. Looks like they really needed it. The curse of the angry spirit struck them down, as it is going to strike you who brought the shadow to this land. You are coming with us now, the place of sacrifice, at the temple of the spirit of the snow. Uh, Mr. Rex, what does he mean? Pagan, I think he means to take us for a ride. Oh, no. I don't like this being tied down on a stone bench and that stage over there with the big ugly bird on it. Yeah. A statue of Buddha with a parrot's beak. The Lama goes in for demonology. Show's about to begin, Pagan. Watch the Lama. He, he's kneeling down on his knees in front of that statue. What's he going to do that for? Quiet, listen, listen. We call upon you, O Padma Sambhava, in our hour of greatest need. From the seven heavens, tell us, Almighty One, what we must do, that the anger in your heart may dissolve as the sun dispels the mist on Lamba Parbat. What is your desire, Mighty One? Will you speak to us? Will your voice be heard? I shall speak, Shalto. My voice shall be heard. Mr. Rex, that, that bird is talking. Quiet, will you? Oh, but, but... My spirit must be appeased. The sacrifice must be made. Deliver their souls to me. Now, just a minute, boys. Let's get one thing straight. The only spirit that needs appeasing around here is the spirit of humanity. The wholesale sacrifices you're cooking up won't save the world. They'll help to destroy it. Blasphemer. Unholy blasphemer. I call upon you, mighty one, to let me end this desecration. Allow me to silence these miserable tongues. Speak, mighty one. Proceed with the sacrifice. Mr. Rex, Mr. Rex, look. He's got a knife. He's going to slice us dead. Oh, 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 do something, Mr. Rex, do something. Help! Come on, my friend. Oh, I'm, I'm dead. Shut up. Oh, but he shot me with his knife. He, hey, hey, that llama's guy's gone. He's come out of here. Yeah. Behind those curtains on the dais. The shot scared him off. They did? Lucky for him, my hands were tied. I'd have shown him a couple of things or two. Maybe you'll get your chance. Sounds like he might be coming back. Huh? Coming back? Oh, no, no. Thurston! Thurston! Are you in here? That's right, Huxford. Over here. That English guy? Yeah. Thurston, you're all right. Then I fired in time. How'd you get the inspiration, Huxford? I'll cut the ropes. I I, I rode out to the base camp. 
saw those beggars snatch you. I followed here when it looked like things were going to get rough. Well, I thought I'd better try something. There, there you are. Thanks. Uh, that's, that's much better. But what the blazes was that voice business? Had my hair doing tricks, believe me. Are you kidding? More like a microphone and speaker behind that curtain. So that's it. Then this fake spirit bloke must have been... Look out, Thurston, look out! What's the matter, Huxford? Trigger happy? Someone just poked a gun out from behind that curtain. But I think I potted the blight, huh? Well, let's take a look. Good Lord. Yeah. He had a gun, all right. Uh, still frozen in his hand. But, Mrs. Thurston, it's that loud chowder. You mean he was playing this spirit ghost? Why don't you try asking the parrot sitting on his shoulder? Oh, no! Well, Mr. Thurston, we're all packed. Nothing to do but give this place the brush-up. Not quite, Pagan. We've got to make sure that phony spirit of the snows is finally laid to rest. What kind of a crack is that? Chowder got bumped off, didn't he? Sure. But the llama, Malice, and Huxford are still around, aren't they? But you told me yourself, dead men don't hurt anybody. Listen. Chowder's pistol was frozen in his hand. That means rigor mortis had set in. That usually doesn't happen until quite a time after death, and Huxford had just shot him. So what? So we're going to find out why. Back at the Temple of Buddha. Why are we taking this dark passage anyhow? Because it started behind those curtains, Pagan. I want to find out where that llama was going. But miles under the ground, what can be down here? Look along that cross cut and see for yourself. Hey, look at that. Cages. Cages with parrots in them. What are they doing down here? There's a door in that wall. I think we'll find the answer inside. Look at this place. A junk shop for bottles and old gas burners. Pagan, it's as modern a research laboratory as I've ever seen. What are these racks? Full of these tubes and... Uh, Don't what? touch them! Huh? What's the matter with them? Those tubes are full of concentrated death. Psittacosis cultures. Yeah? Professor Reeder was experimenting here with that stuff. That's what killed those natives. He was using human beings as guinea pigs. Trying to develop a weapon for biological warfare. So you have discovered the real answer at last, Mr. X? Mr. Thurston, that girl's here again. Hello, my niece. Decided to be in on the finish? There is little use in starting something if one does not see it end. So I followed you here. Mr. X, she's the professor. How about that, my niece? No. No, Mr. Thurston, I was the one who found Dr. Conrad's letter the day after he died and sent it to you. Then I began to suspect that he'd been murdered. I grew afraid. That is why I tried to warn you away. Then that crack potted llama must be the guy. Wrong again, Pagan. It's John Huxford. Huh? That right, Huxford? Quite right, Thurston. You, but... He's got a gun. Yes. You know, I was doing quite well with my little experiments here until you came along. Yeah, your mountain climbing provided a swell excuse for bringing in scientific equipment and supplies. I suppose Conrad tumbled, so you ought to get rid of him. Exactly. But how did you, uh, tumble, Thurston? Why would a mountain climber in Bhutan be interested in silicosis? You were. And your melodrama in the temple backfired. You thought Salal would make a perfect alibi, but you forgot one thing. Rigor mortis. Rigor mortis? Sure. It proved that he'd been killed much earlier. A dead man can't shove guns through curtains, Hertzford. And you couldn't have known he was there unless you had put him there yourself. One can't be perfect in everything, Thurston. At least those test tubes and their cultures are perfect. There are nations, you know, that will pay me millions for them. Yeah, too bad you'll never get a way to sell them. Put down that test tube, you fool. It contains enough virus to destroy a city. That's what I figured. You made one more mistake, Huxford. You forgot that glass is breakable. Oh, you've smashed it, you idiot. That virus will kill us all. Let me out of here. Not so fast, Huxford. <coughs> nice work, Mr. X. Yes. Yes, you have, Professor Rader, Mr. Thurston. But what good will it do us? You heard what he said, that virus is deadly. Yeah, but there's nothing deadly about distilled water. Distilled water? That's what it says on the rack I took that tube from. Hartford was too panic-stricken to notice. Phew. They were not going to die after all. Well, 
But, Mr. Thurston, are you sure he was that spirit in the snows? Yeah, Peg, on I'll guarantee it. I only wish it was easy to get rid of another spirit. Spirit of war. That's the deadliest of all viruses in the world today. One that could spread like a plague all over the globe. That's the disease we've got to get under control before it destroys us. Frigid Air star, Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. And I'd like you to know that my lease was played by Kathy Lewis tonight. Next week, our story is called The Rane of Shalaka. And Mr. X runs into two of the strangest characters in his entire career. Plenty of suspense, too. And as usual, Leon Belasco will be along as Pagan Zellschmidt. Just one last thought, friends. A lot of people in the world have learned that freedom is something that can be lost. Let's protect that freedom by being good citizens, by taking an active interest in government. Your help is vital, because remember, freedom is everybody's job. That's all. Oh, and be sure to join us next week when again I return as the man called X. Good night. Bridget Ayer's Band Called X is directed by Jack Johnstone, with music composed and conducted by Johnny Green. Tonight's story was written by Sidney Marshall. So until next week, same time, same station, this is Wendell Niles speaking for Frigid Air, made only by General Motors. All characters and incidents used on this program are fictitious. And any resemblance to actual persons or incidents is purely coincidental. Remember, every Sunday night brings you two popular dramatic shows on CBS, The Man Called X and The Adventures of Sam Spade. Yes, for the best in entertainment, tune in and stay tuned in to CBS, the biggest show in town. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.